You want to create a SaaS but struggle to decide for the perfect idea? Of course, you don't want to waste a lot of time and energy into something no one really cares about in the end. Now at my software development agency, hundreds of ideas have crossed my table. And over the course of time, I have identified some key patterns that separate truly successful SaaS from the rest. That's why in this video, I will share a straightforward process for you to not only find a solid SaaS idea, but also validate it. If you watch through until the end, you have the tools to develop your own SaaS concept and also confirm its potential. Let's cut together through the noise and get to what really works in the SaaS world. So the first fundamental difference I've discovered for successful SaaS is that they already have a different starting point. What I mean by that is they already come from real problems. So I've noticed that a lot of ideas out there, they start with an idea and then people look for problems that they can solve with this idea. But I'd say the first fundamental thing is if you want to start with a software, don't look for ideas, look for clear problems. So ideally, you don't start with the solution, then find a problem and then a niche. It is actually the other way around. So first start with a niche, identify a clear problem in that niche and then come up with a solution. So let's first jump into the first point here, like how to find a niche. Ideally, you have some kind of industry specific knowledge. Do you work at a certain place? Do you have like certain advantages or insights into a niche that you can use? That's the first ideal way to come up with a niche. If you don't have uh, like a niche that you have some unique insights in, I still want to give you some kind of framework how you can find out a niche. This is a framework from a guy called Alex Ramosi. You probably know him. It is a way to bring in certain factors to evaluate niches. There's a thousand niches out there, a thousand sub niches, and I want to give you some kind of framework on how you can decide what is best for you. So the first factor to come up with a good niche is definitely purchasing power. Ideally, you wanna to sell to a niche that has some kind of money to spend, right? It is way easier, for example, to sell to agency real estate niche. They have more money to work with than, for example, barber shops. Like they are already working on, on very small margins and I mean, you can still go inside one of these niches. It's just way easier to sell to people that also have money to spend. Next is market size and growth. You don't want to find yourself like in a shrinking market, like any kind of newspaper market, or it is not necessary that this market is crazy growing. Sometimes like also stable markets uh, can be very interesting, but ideally you want to have some upwards trend for the market. So that's definitely something to consider here. Next comes ease of targeting. So you already want to have in mind how are you gonna distribute your software? You don't wanna develop something for a month and, and invest like a lot of time and money, then have like a finished product and realize like, how do I market this thing? How do I get users? So ideally you are already wanna think about this and this can be highly individual. You maybe have some certain kind of advantage in a niche. You know some people working in, in construction um, and they can help you maybe distribute. In general, look into the sources of how to marketing. So for example, if you want to use cold email, it is way easier to find the email address of an e-commerce owner versus uh, a dentist, for example, or like some restaurants owner. They maybe don't even read emails, but obviously there's more uh, distribution channels than just cold email, but I want to encourage you to already think about, okay, which of these niches or how easy if I develop a solution in this niche, how easy can I get in contact with the decision makers in this niche? And the last factor, which I also consider as very important is personal interest. You're probably going to spend a lot of time with this idea and a lot of time interviewing clients in, in this market and serving this niche. So. I consider it very important that you have some personal interest, especially when things are not always easy, things are getting harder uh, and you need to show some endurance there. You want to be in a market that personally motivates you, that you are curious about really learning more and yeah, maybe even have some personal insights there. So yeah, I just came up with a bunch of niches here um, and that is obviously not, uh, that's a very subjective ranking here. I've ranked it from one to five, like how would I consider these niches in their purchasing power, in their market size, in their ease of targeting. And 
what maybe is my personal interest there. But yeah, I highly encourage you to think about for yourself, do your research on those niches and evaluate them. So once we have identified our niche, next we want to identify a clear problem in that niche. So something that we can solve, but we don't want to think about hmm, what could be a cool idea for that niche. No, we want to first identify a problem and then come up with a solution. So for identifying the problem, there's also many ways to do so. Um, do your research on Google, maybe watch some YouTube videos about it and really get to know the niche. How are they thinking? What is their day to day looking like? What do they don't like about their current situation maybe? Um, and then you can come up with problems. I still want to show you a way that I really like when it comes to doing my research on a new niche and identifying problems. And that is using different software review uh, pages and G2 being definitely one of the biggest. So let's say we did our research, we identified a niche we want to go with, for example, real estate. Then we can go to the G2 website and you can, first of all, do your Google research, find out the most used software or very specific software, or maybe even during researching uh, a niche, you found some softwares those, um, yeah, that niche is always using. But you can also come up here and type in your category, for example, real estate. And if it's a bigger niche, usually it also has like subcategories, brokerage management, integrated works, uh, workplace management, uh, lease administration and so on. One that really sticks out to me is this dot loop here. So what I really like about G2 is that your ideal client is spending a lot of time here to describe what they like and what they don't like about the setup. So you get some kind of overview over here, but the most interesting is these reviews down here. So they describe what they like about the software, what they dislike about the software and what problem is the software solving and how is that benefiting you, which is such a valuable insight. So what I would do here is create a Google Sheet with one column, you list out all the different problems and in the next column, you count how often does this problem cure. For example, problem one, 20 times, problem two, 15 times, and then you have a clear ranking of what are the problems that people are facing. And while reading those, you also get a feeling of which problems do they need to solve and, and why do they pay months to months for this software? So what are they lacking? best about it. And you wouldn't only do this for this software here. I would highly encourage you to go through different softwares in this market. And over time, you get a feeling of, hey, across five different softwares, all the time, this one problem is coming up. And I can promise you, if you spend enough time here, reading the reviews, understanding the client, you will already also come up with ideas of how to solve this. Maybe you need to do some additional research, but I've done this hundreds of times with different niches and all the time I already get inspired with some kind of solution for this problem. So the beauty about this process of identifying a real problem in the market and coming up with ideas and solutions based on that is that you already have kind of a market validation because people that are paying for your competitors are telling you, I have this problem, I want, like that is a real problem and I need it to be solved. Still, I brought you some validation questions you can ask yourself if you have an idea based on the problems you've identified. And ideally, a software solution always somehow saves time or makes money. That is how you generate real value and basically with your price that, that you're charging them. You just take a minimum cut of this value that you're generating for them. Also, how sticky is it? You wanna look out for problems that come up very regular and that you, you not solve them once and then they basically cancel your subscription. Best is if you solve something or provide some value that they need every month or all the time, basically. How sick it is, solve it, does it solve a regular problem? And also how hard it is to switch because when people are gonna decide for software, they have to switch from something else usually. That can be a competitor software, but that also can be Excel, for example, like the current problem they're solving with Excel and they still need to switch to your software. So why would users switch from competitors? What is your real USP? So we have decided for a niche, we have identified a clear problem and we already have our ideas 
of how to tackle and solve this problem. And during the process, we already did our first validation. But of course, the real validation comes when you have a real solution. So we need to start bringing our solution to life and we do so by building an MVP. What is an MVP? MVP stands for Minimum Viable Product. You just want to focus on one clear problem you're going to solve, not like an app with a thousand features. You can do so later, but really identify one clear problem that your software is the solution for. And if you did your Google Sheet with problems you listed out and the ideas you have to solve this problem, you already know what is the most important value that you're gonna solve first. I can definitely encourage you to develop the first, very first version of your app with no code. I have already created some videos on this channel of how to develop an app with no code and I will continue to do so. So make sure to subscribe if you wanna learn how to build your MVP with no code. Why do I encourage you to develop your app with no code? Because it's just five to 10 times faster compared to traditional code. And you also have a way quicker learning curve is if you're a non-technical founder. That's what it is really about in this first stage. And if you bring your app into action, you're already ahead of 99% of people who just stop at having a cool idea, but never bringing it into life and never actually doing something on it. So MVP also means that you're not gonna sit there for six months developing 20 different features and then releasing it. No, ideally you wanna enter this cycle over here as soon as possible. And this cycle, I really consider the core cycle of developing a SaaS. So at first you talk to users and that's why we read our reviews. That's our initial talking to users. And those are not our users. So those are users of other software. You discover the pain points, which we did. You build a feature, which is basically just an idea of how to solve this. You build a feature on top of the pain points. And when you implement this feature, which at first at your MVP is just one or two features, with these features, you can acquire new customers because you're solving new problems. With those new users, they are now your users. You're gonna talk to them again and identify the next problems, next challenges you wanna tackle, build features on top of that and acquire new users. So that's why it's so important with the MVP, you just have one minimum pain point. You just have a very small targeting group, but you do the best job to solving this. And through this, you're gonna build features feature by feature. And this is really like, the, the development of your app is being led by users and not by you sitting there thinking about what problems are cool. No, your users at this point will tell you what's the next biggest problem. And this, this is really putting the user in the center of all of this development. So yeah, at this point, strongly encourage you to get into action, identify your niche, identify the problem and get into action with a solution. And if you want to learn more about how to build your solution, click on the next video where I will show you how to build something with no code. And I will see you there.